The uh, sutured flap is more stable. See, it's just semi-lunar, full thickness flap all the way to bone. This is the periosteal elevator. And now I'm measuring with my periodontal probe from the margin of the crown to the approximate location of the tip of this mesial buccal root, and that's about nine and a half, ten millimeters. And this is a high speed number four round burr on a, with a long shank. Now to be sure I'm in the right location, I'm taking a little piece of gutta percha, this is a hot tip, and I'm going to place it in that, uh, that beginning ostectomy and take a radiograph. And you can see there's the root and there's the gutta percha cone. So I know the root is right there in relation to the gutta percha cone. Sometimes the roots are not directly apical to the crown of the tooth and you want to be sure you're performing your, your osteotomy in the right location. See, I'm, remo I'm removing that and I know I'm in the right location. And you can see here's the root. You can see the, gutta, the old gutta percha down there and there's the root of the tooth. And now I'm just cutting off the root of the tooth. You remember that root was just partially filled. I'm just very lightly cutting the root of the tooth. And now I'm curetting any granulation tissue with this small spoon. Now when you make this cut, when you sever the root tip, you want to be sure it's angled like the cut's angled like this. Not like this because you can't retrofill easily a root that's cut like that, perpendicular to the root. You want the cut to be angled so you can retrofill it, curating any granulation tissue. You can see my angled cut right here. And this is a tiny round burr. This is about a number one round burr to make a slight divot in the tip of that t apical part of that root, and that's where you're going to retrofill it, where you're going to place the retrofill. Now sometimes these roots will be into the sinus. Don't worry about that if it happens. You know, many first molar teeth that are extracted have roots in the sinus and you have an oral antral communication. In those cases, you just want to place the patient on antibiotics, a decongestant, and an antihistamine, and a nose spray for about a month and tell them don't blow their nose for about a month or two. But it's a common thing, I'm just cleaning that real well with chlorhexidine. The hardest part of this is keeping it, keeping, uh, controlling the uh, bleeding so you can place the retrofill material. I'm sectioning, I'm placing a cotton ball for a minute just to control it, and here's my BC uh, RRM endo sequence. You can, you can fill the root, the apical part of the root with IRM. This is just root sealer. And this is a good material. Cleaning that, flattening it, letting that set for a minute. Then we're gonna bone graft this with a freeze-dried bone. And this is Maxius freeze-dried bone. I like that real well. You can use Biowise, that's another good material. And this is number 12, Bard Parker. And I'm just undermining the coronal part of the incision. If you don't, it's very difficult to suture that. And then this is a contour adapt resorbable collagen membrane. Now I'm trimming that. I like to cut the corners off. It's just easier to place. Placing that over the bone graft and being sure my flap is free. And this is 4-0 gut suture. And see, because I've undermined the coronal part of the flap, it's easy to suture underneath there. If this is attached to the gingiva, it's very difficult to place the suture under the flap or under the gingival tissue.